welcome to the people's choice. Anybody know how to get rid of bees? They got in the ventilating shaft here in City Hall. They've mistaken me for a hunk of honeysuckle. Oh, these are wedding invitations I'm supposed to address. My aunt Gus and Mayor Peoples are getting married in a couple of weeks. Missed it. I didn't. And she agrees with me. I don't mind a bee buzzing. The time to worry is when he doesn't. <laughs> How do I look? Like a pretty girl under a pretty hat. Thank you. It's your aunt's wedding bonnet I picked it up for. She says I can wear it at my own wedding. Do you think I ought to take her up on it? Oh? Are you thinking of getting married? No, only constantly. <laughs> yes, Mayor Peoples? I just tried on my wedding suit. Miller, why did you do it? You meddling nincompoop. Huh? Don't leave. I'm coming right over. What did you do this time? I don't know. I think your father's got groom jitters. He's still upset at you for trying to run everything. Well, after all, he's marrying my aunt. You shouldn't have tipped off the papers. He wanted to introduce Gus at the end of his television talk. Fine time to introduce your bride, after a speech on air pollution and rubbish burning. <laughs> I'm sorry if your father thinks I'm trying to run everything, but Gus is all the family I've got. And she's waited all this time to get married. And I think it's wonderful, having your aunt for my stepmother. Hey, what does that make you and me? That makes us cousins. I'm their uncle. <laughs> Gus is the greatest woman in the world. And she's devoted her whole life to me. I can never even hope to pay her back, not even in a small way. But one thing I do know, this wedding is going to be a beautiful moment for her, something she can always remember with pride. So that's all I've been trying to do. Now, if your father thinks I've been meddling, I'm sorry. But as he says about politics, you can't please everybody. Miller, look at this. Just look. He looks like a penguin at half mast. You called the tailor and told him to do this. No, sir. You've been set on my losing weight before this wedding, and this is your way of trapping me into it. You shouldn't have done it, Sock. But, but, but I didn't done it. I mean, I didn't do it. <laughs> Neither end is safe around here. Called him a nincompoop. Well, I'm sorry you're an income poop, Sock. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, Sock. That's all right, Your Honor. I promise not to interfere anymore with your wedding plans, and I'm a man of my word. Fine. Now, what are you doing? Making out your guest list. <laughs> Sock, it's already been decided. Senator Clawber, Congressman Tuttle, Admiral Stetson, Judge Cagle and their wives. Well, I don't even know half of these people. Well, they all control votes. You want to be congressman, don't you? Who is this Bruno Pe Oh, John, you noticed. Isn't he cute? He's going to make a doll of a husband. <laughs> Thanks for tipping me off, Mandy. That'll cost you a dozen nylons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, Z, I just came from the travel agency. I picked up our reservations to New Orleans. Good. Oh, you better let me hold the tickets. You two have so much to do. Oh, no. Oh, but, sir, sir, you know you may lose them. I Gang Mayor John Peoples. We'll have dinner at the captain's table every night. Oh, Mandy. My father's a VIP. Uh, sir, really. <laughs> yes, sir, there's nothing like taking a trip by boat to New Orleans. These are train tickets. <laughs> by dinner at the captain's table. Well, you, you can share a, an engineer's lunchbox. <laughs> yes, you, I love you. But stick your nose in my affairs one more time, and I promise you I'll punch it. We must have had very good reasons for switching our plans. 
Well, well, well yes, sir. Uh, you see, people get seasick on boats, you know, and, and green isn't a very becoming color on a honeymoon. You can trust a train. All it does is go chuggity chug, chuggity chug. But I don't want to go chuggity chug, chuggity chug. Well, now, sir, <laughs> sir, try to realize. A, a boat has a rolling motion, and it never stops. It goes from port to starboard, and starboard to port, and port to starboard, and starboard to port, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And you gaze at the horizon, and it goes up and down, and up and down, and up and down. And for days and nights, it's port to starboard, and up and down, and up, up, up. On the wedding. But I'm the best man. Dear, you're trying too hard. For the last time, I'll tolerate no interference. I'm over 21. I'm educated. I'm intelligent. And I'm qualified to handle any wedding plans myself. And you're aggravating your aunt. I can take it. She can't. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you're making her nervous. Now, now, easy, John. Here's something that'll take your mind off a of sock. My wedding ring. What a shame. It's too small. Oh, that's because my great-grandmother had a thinner knuckle. All the women in my family have used this ring, and they've been pretty happy. And I'm not going to break the chain. Use it at the ceremony. Afterwards, I'll slip one on that fits. Oh, no. Why not have this one enlarged? Then it'll be lucky for you, and you won't have to buy a new one. I'll be very happy to take it down to the junior. No, you don't. Take it and run, Gus. Hide it in the bread box, in the vault, in Fort Knox. Father isn't around, pick up Cleo and wave her. <laughs> what I have to do for one hamburger a day. <laughs> now a way of signaling. You ought to let the Coast Guard in on it. My lap just couldn't take your father again. <laughs> He's on the patio making some phone calls. He's trying to get back on that boat. Mandy, I've made up my mind. Hands off. From now on, I'm through being mother's little helper. They don't appreciate it. From now on... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, Councilman. He just came in. I'll talk it over with the mayor. The bees are up on the third floor in City Hall. <laughs> All the secretaries are frantic. I gotta do something about this. Sock, you just have to try and understand my father. After all, it is his wedding. I mean, if, if I were going to the Hawaiian Islands on my honeymoon, I wouldn't want to go there on a train. And if I have a sentimental feeling about a ring that slips on just up to my knuckle, that's as far as the ring is going to go. Tyrannus, Tyrannus, the kingbird. Where there are kingbirds, there are no bees. When I was with you the girl, haven't heard a word I said. We'll put kingbirds all around the park in City Hall. Those birds are murder on bees. I'll tell your father. What did I just say? You want to go to Hawaii on a train for 30 days with a ring around your knuckle. <laughs> the director cuts to me when he wants a dash of sex appeal. Thanks, Captain, for getting me my stateroom back. Tell me, do they still Shanghai young men to see? <laughs> Too bad, I had a customer for you. No, thanks. We're not getting married on the boat. Just a quiet little ceremony at my home. Oh, yes, indeed. I'm quite nervous. <laughs> well, I'll see you aboard. Goodbye. Ah, uh, little Gussie. Won't be long now, kitten. Two more days until we're on our honeymoon. <laughs> Gussie was he lover, itty bitty mare? Hmm? Oh, brother. <laughs> mm. Well, why shouldn't I kiss her? We're getting married. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, before you go on your honeymoon, there's a little matter I'd like to discuss with you. What is it? 
Well, sir, I'd like to tell you about the bees. Bees? Yes, sir. And the birds. Kingbird. You see, I think... I don't need you to tell me about the birds and the bees. <laughs> well, you know about it. Good. Who told you? Miller, I'm 56 years of age. Oh, congratulations, sir. Shall I take care of it while you're on your honeymoon? You're being impertinent, Miller. Well, sir, I'm only doing my civic duty. Now, about the kingbirds. I've known about the birds and the bees for 40 years. But it only started today. Hello, darling. You had to have a nephew. Why do you always get him steamed up? Do you realize he's my future husband? Well, sure I do. I was just explaining to him about the bees and the birds. Oh! Hold these, dear. I think everything's all set. Oh, am I going to have a beautiful mother. I really hit the jackpot. A nice husband and a lovely daughter, all with the same nickel. <laughs> when you and Daddy come back from your honeymoon, I'm going to have the house all fixed up. You'll have it all to yourselves. I'm moving into an apartment, you know. Hey, you're living right here. I'm not losing a daughter the minute I get her. When I have an argument with your father, I want someone on my side. Okay, Mom. <laughs> Hey, we better clear out of here before the guests start arriving. Have you heard from Sock at all today? No, but he'll show. I don't know. A left hook to a man's jaw makes him pretty unfriendly. Oh, he wasn't hurt. I pulled my punch. <laughs> Sock is just a little overeager. It's not every day his favorite aunt gets married. <laughs> Getting nervous. Sock's the best man. He should be here. Oh, he'll show up. He hasn't strength of character to stay away. <laughs> Besides, he's not only a softy for a left hook, he's a softy for sentiment. Don't be too sure. I just dropped in to tell you I'm not going to be here. Oh, Get sir. yourself another best man. <laughs> this time, he's falling on his own. <laughs> Okay, you bribe me. I think I'll see how the groom is doing. Gus, I know I haven't exactly been a sedative to you and the mayor this week, but it isn't every day I marry off my favorite aunt. Guess I was like the nervous football player, so anxious to make his first touchdown, he runs the wrong way. I understand, and as for John, I know he understands too. She's a wonderful woman. But why does she have to have a nephew that's a bungle booby? Don't start steaming or you'll wilt your flower. And don't use that temper of yours on Gus. Sock tells me she has a beautiful left hook. Hmm. And if the mayor ever loses his temper with you, you just call me. Hush. He just shouts. He's really like a lamb. All wool and a yard wide. <laughs> I'm more worried about you. I've practically been your mother since you were three years old. Look how much I've learned since then. I can eat my own milk. Still let you check on the necklines. <coughs> Come on, Daddy, you're happy. Of course I'm happy. You sure? 
You sure? I'm happy. I'm happy you're happy. I've never been happier in my whole life. Chopped liver, sir. Sark, have you got the ring? Have a chopped liver, sir. It'll relax you. I told Augusta not to give it to you. Now, easy, sir. Easy. Here it is, right here. Still smaller. Congratulations, Councilman. <laughs> hey, Cleo. Cleo. Hey. Excuse me, Senator. Well, my boy, you're not losing an ant. You're gaining a political asset. Hey, yes, sir. Hey, excuse me, sir. I got to see a dog about a ring. You got. Cleo, Cleo, Cleo. Oh, excuse me, Judge. Excuse me. Uh, you didn't see a long dog about. Oh, uh, I'll talk to you later. Excuse me. Cleo, 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 Cleo. I beg your pardon. Have you seen? Oh, there you are. <laughs> a stowaway. She wasn't invited to the wedding. Bad girl. Bad girl. Hey, where's the ring? the ring? Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to start the ceremony. Would you all please go out onto the patio? Sock, you ready? Uh, yeah, in a moment. The ring, Cleo, the ring. They can't get married if I don't find the ring. Oh, Judge Kegel. Yes, Councilman? Uh, Judge, do you think you could delay... Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the mayor has his eye on you for something more than uh, Justice of the Peace. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. If you make an impression on him, you know, he can get you a judgeship. I, I, I never knew he even noticed me. Yes. So before you marry him out there, talk it up a little. Hmm? Oh, a nice, long, flattering ceremony, I see. Uh, but it's a bit unusual, but I can rise to the occasion. That's it. Just, uh, uh, Stretch it out a little, huh? See, that's <laughs> Cleo. Cleo, where's the ring? Show me, where's the, where's the ring, Cleo? Here, you like this, don't you? Feels good, doesn't it? Feels fine, but the ring's in the chopped liver. <laughs> Cleo, show me, where's the ring? All right, I'll do your favorite tricks. Now, where's the ring? My best man. You always like this one. No! He's a million laughs, but it's still in the chopped liver. I think I had one too many champagnes. <laughs> we are gathered here today to join together Augusta Bennett and John Peoples, a man who has done so much for our fine progressive community Today, we have no slums because of our honored bridegroom. The ring, the ring. Don't look so stupid. Show me. <laughs> Attica, girl. Point it out. Point it out. In the face. Good girl. <laughs> Nothing in here. And we can be proud that he has brought New City a freeway. And, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, the parking meters. And let's not forget the parking meters. <laughs> Try again. 
players. <laughs> the chandelier. Oh, you couldn't put it up there. Always mindful of the taxpayer's pocketbook. He has adopted this means of raising revenue. <laughs> and, and, uh... Uh... The storm drain. And let's not forget the storm drains. <laughs> the streets were flooded until our groom... Stop toying with me. <laughs> the hors d'oeuvres. All right. I'll feed you one, but this is your last bribe. Take your choice. Until our boom. And now we have the most beautiful storm drain. Good girl. <laughs> and all the time John Peoples, our mayor, has been in office, we have had a dry city. <laughs> And so, Augusta Bennett, do you take this man as your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you, John Peoples, take this woman as your lawful wedded wife? I do. But I didn't think I was. And now place the ring on her third finger. Chopped liver is pretty slippery. <laughs> and I'll pronounce you man and wife. Hi, Senator. Uh, there's a piece for me. Oh, Mandy, catch. you are, Anthony. Cleo is waiting. <laughs> oh, darling. Don't worry, dear. Someday when Cleo throws her bouquet, you'll catch it. <laughs>